Hello, my name is Raymond Hughes, and I'm the interviewer today for the Veterans History Project for the Cincinnati Public, Cincinnati Hamilton County Public Library. And today's interview is being conducted at the <coughs> New England Club on Beachmont Avenue in Cincinnati, Ohio. Today's date is the 28th day of April, 2015. And today we're interviewing World War II veteran John William Iser, who goes by the name of Jack. And do uh, uh, you mind if I call you Jack throughout the no, interview? No, that's right. That's uh, fine. Uh, Jack, if you would, uh, let's start out with uh, where you were born and uh, when you were born and where you were living. I was born in Cincinnati, Ohio. I was born over in Oak, uh, O'Brien. in O'Brienville, and, and uh, I moved to uh, we moved to Oakley when I was five years old. When were you born? Your date of birth? Nineteen twenty-four, nineteenth uh, of September. Nineteen twenty-four. And your parents' name? My parents' name was uh, William William J. Iser. And my mother's name was Elizabeth. Her maiden name was Vogt, V-O-G-T. And uh, and what did your father do for a living? He was a glass engraver, engraved glass work. Uh -huh. It was that's quite a quite an art. Yes. Yeah. And uh, for sterling glass. Sterling glass. Sterling glass. Yeah. Where was that located at? That was in in uh, Mount Adams, oh, Ma oh, right yeah. next to the incline. Yes. Yeah. And um, and where did you go to school? I went to Saint Cecilia Grade School in Oakley mm -hmm. for eight years, and then I went to Purcell High School four years, and then I had two years of. Uh, of college at the University of Cincinnati. I see. And did you have any brothers and sisters, Jack? I had uh, seven brothers and sisters. There was Charles, Alma, Donald, Raymond, Pat, and Bill, and myself. I see. Quite a large family. Yes, it was. Yeah. Yeah. Her sister just died at 90. She was 91. 90. 90. How, how old are you right at this I'm stage? 90. I'm 90. I'm 90 years, years old. Age. Yeah. I see. Um, so uh, did you play sports in high school? Yes, I did. I was on a track team. I pole vaulted for a short time in my, in my junior year. And I was determined to play baseball in my last year, so I, I got on the baseball team. At Purcell? At Purcell. Now, uh, you said two years of college. Was that be, before you went into service or after you went into that service? That was after I went into yeah. service. Okay. Now, did you have any uh, jobs or anything like that while you were going to high school? Well, no, not really. No. Uh -uh. At Agro you didn't work. Well, there? I did. I worked at Agro Agro ice, ice, ice cream parlor. parlor. I was a soda jerk. Ah, yeah. And what position did you play then when you were doing sports at, at baseball at uh, Purcell? I was shortstop. Shortstop. I see. Mm -hmm. So, uh, after graduating from high school, what happened in your life? Well, then I, shortly after that, I went into the, into the Marine Corps. Let's see, you show here that you, uh, I'm curious, uh, uh, w do you remember Pearl Harbor Day, December the 7th? Yes, I do. Do you recall what you were doing that day? I don't recall. I, we played foot, I was playing football on a football team, a Sunday football, and I remember that. That had something to do with it. Uh -huh. but, uh, I don't remember anything else. 
How soon after uh, high school did you join the Marine Corps? Well, I w went to work at Wright's, Wright Aeronautical was the name of that place. Oh. And I went to work for them for a short time. In uh, Evendale? Yes. I see. And what did you do for them? I worked in the tool, in the toolbox, in the, or in the I handed out the, the tools that they needed for the, for the different machines. And they produced uh, the engines for the uh, for military the, for, aircraft. For the military aircraft, yeah. Yes. They, uh, I see, so you, uh, how long did you work there before you joined the service? I went from there into the service, so uh, I guess I was there about six months, and I went into the military. So uh, now did you join, you, it shows that you joined the Marine Corps on the third day of March, 1943? Yes. Did you join here in Cincinnati? Yes, I did. Where was the recruiting station at? That was in Oakley. Uh, and it was the Fifth Third Bank in Oakley is where we all got together. Actually, it was what the enlisted men joined there. And that's where we got together. So in 1943, when you joined, you were 19 years old? I don't know if I was 19 then yet, um, or right, right close to it. Yes. Or uh, it's still 18. Yeah, I was probably still 18. Yeah, still 18 years old. Mm -hmm. So you joined uh, in Oakley. Where did uh, where did they send you from there? Paris Island, South Carolina. You want to tell us a little bit about boot camp down at Paris Island? Well, that that was quite a quite a re reception. That was a, they had a, a sergeant down there that was pretty well known for being kind of nasty. And uh, it was, it was, uh, it was interesting. You recall his name? I, I don't recall his name. But they, they, they referred to him as, as a, uh, I don't know what the what the devil you'd call it. Nothing you want to repeat on no, TV. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How long was basic training there? South Carolina. It was a couple months. A couple months. And then we went to Paris Island, or to the rifle range for. A, it was a couple of weeks there on a rifle range. That was located where? At at Paris Island. Also. Yeah. And the sand fleas would eat you up. <laughs> yeah. And after basic and the rifle range, uh, where did they uh, ship you to? Then I wa we wound up being shipped to Texas. We went uh, Texas A&M Texas A&M College oh. Radio School there, and I I saw I made corporal out of there. The top, I don't know, so, top so many percent got made corporal and the other made PFC. What were they training you to do there? To uh, operate a, uh, it's code typing is what they, they sent through, through the, through, uh, and then, then they would they would grade you on how how well you would accept that you know, and I did very well. I I was one of the first out of the two hundred that got uh, the maximum amount, which which was which they could send, which was thirty some words a minute, and uh, it, it was very interesting. And uh, what do you have to do? Type in code, and then be able to translate it. After well, I, I, the code typing, they, they would send it the code uh, on 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 uh, what you all through your through your air and all, and you would type it out as, as a letter. And uh, well, I'm going 
f fuzzy. That's all right. Take your time. So you, they would send you the message through an earphone, mm -hmm. and then you would type it out in code. Yes. And send it to another party or an, another company, so to speak. Yes. And uh, did you have to interpret code also if you received it? Well, we didn't. We, I don't think we even were concerned with that down there. I see. And how long did you have to go to school there for that uh, study? And uh, I was down there for how long was I down there? Five months. Five, six months. Five, five or six months. And that's where he they played cards. Yeah, there, I mean, this is a story oh. that should be told. It's unbelievable. <laughs> so he won in the crap game, and he sends me an engagement ring. He just sent it through the mail. He didn't ask me if I wanted to marry him or anything. <laughs> I just got a ring. <laughs> Wait a minute. And, and what, is your, what is your wife's name? Oh, we got to get to that story now. I'm sorry. What, and what is your first name? Lucille. Lucille and your maiden name? Conway. Now, <coughs> when did you meet Lucille Conway? And where? Uh, and it was in Oakley. And, uh, at a festival. St. Cecilia's Head Festival every year. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's where I met her there. He was there with his friend. Well, I kind of liked his friend, but <laughs> I didn't really want him. <laughs> and then I, I I never did, no, I never, my mother would die, you know, she was very strict. They did take me home. Oh. Both of them were driving. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> so, what made you think that uh, Lucille. Lucille was romantically interested in you while you Oh, she was interested, all right. She was interested. I had another guy in the Marine <laughs> used to send me his money, and he bought me a cedar chest. I was no more interested. I wasn't going to marry that guy. <laughs> so, tell me, uh, okay, tell me about the card games or the dice games or whatever she was talking, uh, Lucille was talking about there. Well, the card games. Were and you're at Texas A&M now. At Texas A&M College, yeah. Yeah. And what city is that? That done in uh, Bryan, Texas. Okay. And so, w what about the card games and the dice games? Shooting craps, as Lucille said. Well, I wasn't shooting craps. It was it was the card games. Uh -huh. <coughs> Do you win money or something? Yeah, we played for money. Yeah. Did you win? Did you win quite a bit? I won quite a bit at, at that time. I I did. Yeah. And. Uh, you know, one, and I went, we went into town, and the guys went with me to buy the ring. So you bought a, an engagement <coughs> ring? Yeah. And they wanted, to, they wanted to be with me when I was there. So they they did. And I, I got it. <laughs> and so you mailed it to Lucille? Yeah, I mailed it. <laughs> and uh, what did he say in the letter then? Anything? <laughs> I guess I was supposed to know, you know, and take all that for granted. <laughs> Our life has been kind of, you take it as, as granted. Okay, so that then was... Then he went overseas. That was your formal engagement. Yes, yeah, so it was. So, uh, after spending, what did you say, five months at uh, Texas A&M? Yeah. Right. Constantly right. training on code typing. Yeah. Okay. While we were down there, <coughs> we played a a softball game against the army. Army had a two hundred guys down there too. Okay. So we played a fast pitch softball game, and um, I hit a home run down the left field line. I hit a line drive, <coughs> and it went forever, and. Um, I went around, scored. They scored. They tied it up at one to one. And in the last inning, they they set me up again, and I hit another drive in the left center field, and I hit the hell out of it. I hit the hell out of that ball. 
and it rolls, it rolls. I got another home run, so we won the game two to one. That was something. I'll bet. <laughs> I'll bet. So, uh, when your time was up at Texas A&M, where did they ship you then, or did they t ship you out? Well, that, then from then we we decided we had a choice of where we wanted to go, and there was some talk about going to the Fourth Marine Division, and a bunch of us got together, a bunch of us corporals got together and <coughs> decided that's where we wanted to go. So we went to the Fourth Marine Division on the West Coast. We went to. Uh, what was the name of that? Uh, uh, camped out there, Camp Pendleton, Camp Pendleton, California. That's where we went. And how long were you there at uh, Camp Pendleton? <sighs> oh, we we trained there for quite some time, and then we uh. I don't know why I, I was chosen, but I was chosen to go ahead and and uh, on the LSTs. There was 10 LSTs in this convoy, and I was chosen to go in that. So I did, and uh, we, see, it was a, Quite a trip. We went to Hawaii, then. Yeah, we, we went, went to Hawaii. Ten, ten knots, I think, is all. The, they would go as fast as they would go. And, and you were traveling on an LST at that time? Yeah. I used to go to the front of the boat and look out in the water and see the fish. <laughs> Yeah, that was that was kind of interesting. But why they sent me, I don't know. What was your official job description or title, or uh, as a code breaker, like or a code typer, like that? Well, I was a, a signalman, or I mean, I guess you might call me a signalman. I don't know. Yeah. So, how long did it take you to get to Hawaii then? Seems like forever. <laughs> we had a storm out of us, uh, and we lost every ship around us. There was no, not a ship in sight when we, we got there, <coughs> and we pulled up at the, there was a, the one, one island, Kauai. That's where we wound up, at the, near Kauai, and, uh, that's where the rainforest is there. Okay. And um, then, then from from there we we they went they got together and went to Pearl Harbor. I guess they all they all survived, but it was a hell of a storm. So did you stay stationed at Pearl Harbor for a while? Oh, we were there just a short time, and all our, our I got all our guys got together, and and, uh, and then they, then we got together, and uh, and we went to the Marshall Islands. That's where we went to Roy and the Moore Islands. That's where we invaded the Roy and the Moore Islands in the in the Marshall Islands. What time is this uh, period? Is this what you say when you left Hawaii? To get it? That was as early in the year. I guess around February or March. A forty-four. A forty-four, yeah. And what were the names of those islands again? Roy and Namur. R O I. R O I. N A M U R. Namur. 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 Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, tell us something about that experience there. Well, that was it. Was really a maneuver. Really, it was. 
that was quite e we took it quite easily it was islands but uh, then we went got, got went back on ship and went back to Pearl Harbor and, and then we uh, I don't know Hard, hard for me to think. Saipan or yeah, that, that's that's that's, huh? that's that's when we got ready to go <coughs> to Saipan, Saipan and Tinian. And there, I remember when we landed on Saipan, there was big ground swells. Were smooth? It was kind of smooth and but it was kind of rolling mm -hmm. and. You, you'd come up and there'd be ships all over the place and down you'd go and not a ship in sight you know it was it was really interesting and I remember we'd go went right under the guns of the cruiser and they were let go with a blast about knock us out of the water oh boy I can imagine yeah uh, the, the battle wagons we watched them come in and they they tore up the, they put pull within 2,000 yards ashore and let go with blast. They were they were quite something to watch. So you were there for the invasion of Saipan? Yes, I was. We were in the third wave of Saipan. I see. I, um, the, I, I read here, the name of your outfit, actually your company, was the first joint assault. Joint assault signal company, well, yeah. And. Um, so what did what did you do on the invasion? What did, what was your job on the third wave there? We controlled airplanes, and uh, we uh, they would uh, they get a certain area they they needed to attack, <coughs> either <coughs> drop a load on or, or um, uh, strafe or or something. And we'd call those missions on for them. You'd give them the, the approximate vicinity yeah. or the, coordinates yeah. of some sort. They had we had it was kind of made up. You know, they they knew what they were doing, and we knew what we were doing. I see. And uh, you were that was to naval aviators off of an aircraft carrier. That was a, a naval and marine avi avi aviators. Yeah. I see. And um, they would come in and uh, drop bombs also? Yes, they would. Uh, uh, Napalm bombs they would drop. Sometimes they'd go off and sometimes they didn't. Mm -hmm. And how long were you there on Saipan, would you say? Well, we were there till the very end. We uh, actually, our outfit cleaned up on Saipan. <coughs> We um, we went around and uh, on 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 the end of the island and cleaned up everything. What do you mean by clean up? Well, we uh, well we went around. And I mean, where you you actually had to be um, cautious. You oh yeah, yeah. You I mean, we went into the caves and. Got any and then whatever we could get out of a cave, we got a Korean school teacher out of the cave. What about running in the Japanese there in those caves? Nope, uh, they were they were out gone, I guess. Now at Saipan, is that where some of the civilians actually killed themselves? That's that's where the uh, the civilians jumped off the end of the island, and. Just they they just thought we, they thought we were murderers I guess, and they just didn't they went on and psh, off they went. That was the end of the island. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, did you were you able to find very many people hiding out uh, these different captives of the Japanese, so to speak, like the Korean teacher? No, uh, not too many. No. At that time, it was pr pretty well cleaned up, I guess.
That had to be pretty hazardous duty, though, going into these caves and worrying about being booby trapped or something. Well, you never knew. See, that's something you never knew. What type of weapon were you carrying, uh, Jack? At M1, the, ground M1. A ground M1? Yeah. Uh, and I took a BAR for so, so many days. I see. Grounding automatic rifle. Now, the BAR, that, that, did that fire the same uh, shell as a uh, grand? Yeah. 30 out 6? 30 out 6. I see. Did you ever fire the uh, BAR? Yes, I did. Oh. I set off. I think I set a four off one night. <coughs> I swore I saw something. I opened up and whew, it was all, all hell broke loose. On side pan? Yeah. yeah. And then from there, when we cleaned up there, then we got got together at the end and they had a big dinner for us up at the other. Uh, we had a hot meal. They got us some hot meal. Boy, that was good. That was vegetables. We never knew what a vegetable was. <coughs> they, they, you know, they was sea rations is all we oh, had. Oh, yes, I see what you're saying, yes. And that was on Saipan still? <laughs> yeah. Did you have any type of quarters there? Did you have to live in the field the whole time? No, we had to live in the field. Yeah. How many to a tent? Were there well, two men or four men? Or? Well, we never had slept in a tent. We were in the foxhole. Oh, you were in the foxhole the whole time? <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. Most people don't realize that. Yeah. You was dead soldiers at the top of your... Huh? There was a Japanese soldier at the top of your foxhole. Yeah. One, that morning. One, one night we dug in and... The guy next to me had a had one, and and I and I I always slept with my head kind of down because I would snore if I had my head up. Mm -hmm. So I had it down, and all of a sudden, boom! <coughs> and he says, "I got him. I know I got him." And there we he was dead, dead Jap the next morning at the edge of the foxhole. So that's what you meant by cleaning up. Yeah. <laughs> that's a little, I think you hit that a little too lightly for us. But, uh, he doesn't tell really what yeah. it was like. Yeah. But, uh, anything else about Saipan? Where did you find that briefcase on Saipan? <coughs> Laying on a... <coughs> It was oh. oh, this briefcase, yeah, what about this briefcase? Well, I got that on Saipan. Looks, no. looks like it's held up pretty well. What's the story about it? There ain't no, there ain't no there's much of a story, really. Guy who must have got I guess it was. I was probably a Japanese officer's case. Got Tokyo on it. <laughs> yeah. Was there anything in it? Whenever there you. There was. I don't. I don't recall what was was in it. There was some papers, and I could. I don't know. You know, some way they got thrown away. Yeah. Now we're exactly. Wouldn't have been able to read them, but. Yeah. Uh, where exactly did you find us at? Uh, on the in front of your foxhole, or on the ground, or someplace you were cleaning up? It was some in the uh, in an the area there. It was uh, well. Uh, they, they had the, see they they all the Japanese would like pack up a little sack and and tie it up like a little, and there was a bunch of them. And that's the way they would leave their things. And it was around, with, right around with that mail. I see. Now, did you serve with the? Uh, I mean, do you, you recall any of the guys that you served with on Saipan? I recall your quite, buddies? A, quite a few of them. Yes. And uh, did you serve a lot of time with them, or just? Uh, I served quite a bit of time with them. Yes. And 
who were some of them? Well, Do you recall their names? I remember a, a PFC that was with us. Was was he was from Dallas, Texas? What the devil was his name? Well, after after Saipan, did you go into uh, Tinian? Then we went. We got together. Went to and t to Tinian. Yeah. Now. Uh, and uh, what wave were you with uh, and on the Tenian? I think it was the second wave we went in there. I see. And were you doing the same type of... Uh, same thing, <laughs> yeah. And uh, I remember there was a, a tank right in front of me which was, was rolling <coughs> and, a sh and a shell went over and knocked a limb off of a tree right above me and hit in a in the back and it killed I don't know how many officers our our uh, our company com our car company commander was killed and a, a couple others I think when that shell hit in there but uh, and were uh, killed from the artillery burst when yeah. it hit the tree yeah and then we went further on to the island and I got dengue fever what they call dengue fever and I was out for a day. <coughs> and they, What's yeah, a dengue fever? That's a, that's a, some of the gun it was, it just burned you up. It was, it was something that, it, it only lasted for a day. I see. And, and it would go away. But uh, it was quite common. I think it was like a virus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how long were you on uh, Tenium, would you say? Well, we were there all, all the time we was there. They started working on the, you know, that's where the planes landed from, that took, took the bomb, you right. know, from t Tokyo. Yes. And um, uh, that's, uh, they started working on the airfield as we went along. They were actually working on the airfield. While you were still in combat, well, yeah, we're still in combat. Yeah. yeah, it was it was interesting. So did you? Uh, were you calling in airstrikes while you were on Tinian also? Yes, or? we were. Were there a lot of caves on Tinian and uh, like in Saipan, Saipan? A lot of caves. There wasn't as many caves on on Tinian as there was Saipan. I remember in Saipan. There was a great big cave when we went up to on a th th uh, three quarters up the right side of the island. And there was a tre tremendously big cave that they had built. And I don't know why, but uh, that was that was something. You say they built? Do you think it was man-made or? Was I think it was man-made. It almost had to be man-made. Uh -huh. Jack, did you actually, were you able to actually see some of these civilians committing suicide or? No, 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 we never saw that. Yeah. No, they, they they did that on their own. Now where did you get the shrapnel in your leg? Huh? Well, I had a piece of shrapnel hit me in the, in the knee. When, uh, on, on, on Saipan? Yeah, on the, I was on the second day. We were on, when we landed on Saipan, we were under heavy mortar and artillery. I mean, really heavy. It was coming down. You could count every few seconds by a shell, either a mortar or an or, or a artillery shell would be hitting. <laughs> and uh, so we we didn't move for three days. We were kind of <laughs> bedded down for. And we found out that in in the Sharon Kanoa there is the name of the town. There was a smokestack, and up atop that smokestack, and I they had a Japanese uh, 
call he he called Spotted. the shots. Uh -huh. Yeah, <laughs> he was calling them right down on us. And uh, and when they got him and uh, killed him, then then it stopped. <coughs> and uh, so that was the whole. That not only just your company, but the whole third wave there, and yeah. So you were actually pinned down there for th like yeah, three days. Yeah, we were pinned down for three days. Is that when you got hit with the shrapnel? Yeah, or? and then the, the shrap I got hit with with the, in the knee, knee with a piece of shrapnel. Now, what did that require as far as not much, medical care? Not much at all. They didn't pull you off the liner? No. 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 They get the shrapnel out? Yeah. It was just hanging there. Okay. When another one of our guys had a piece of shrapnel in his chest, laying in, right in the part, this piece of hunk of metal was just laying in his chest. <coughs> well, they did the, the, the boss or whoever he would have been. He said you limped, and that's where you. Started. Oh, that—that was that was what, and then we when we went back to Pearl Harbor, uh, we went on a twenty-mile hike, and I started limping. I guess I what my one when, when I one leg is shorter than the other, and I started limping, and uh, so that's when I looked into my uh, my leg, and that's when I went to the hospital to see what the devil was going on. And I, I, that's what, I, if, if I had stayed, if I wouldn't have went there, I, we would have been, been in Iwo Jima. We, we, we were next to going to Iwo Jima, and that's where I missed that. Well, you, um, we left off though at uh, Tinian. How long were you on Tenium, would you say? That was a quite a, that was a quite a fast, that must have been within 15 days, I think, mm -hmm. we had that cleaned up. And while you were there, they were uh, building the, the runway yeah. for the B-29? Yes, they were. Did any of the B-29s land there while you were there, or no. they were just in, no, in not the process then. of not building then. it? No, not then, uh-uh. Now, did you go all around the complete island, or just uh, on the uh, up the right side of the island? Up the right side, uh -huh. and you were co continuously calling in the aircraft yeah. for strikes. Yeah. Now, were you under fire much while you were on Tinian yourself? Oh, not not too not too bad. Not like like Sa Saipan was a little heavier. But uh, no, it was it was quite light on on Tinian. No, uh, you weren't. You weren't there for uh, for Guam, then. I take it. No, no. I see. So after Tinian is when they uh, drew you back to shipped you back to Hawaii. That's when we went back to Hawaii to our rest camp. Yeah. I see. And uh, that's when <coughs> they jammed your leg. Yeah. What did they ascertain about your leg, Jack? There was nothing wrong with it. They patch it up. Yeah. They didn't see anything wrong with your lymph or anything of <laughs> that nature? <laughs> then they sent him to back to the United States. I see. So you had a, a definite problem with your leg from yeah, the shrapnel. Oh, not not too started. much of a problem. So how long so how long how long were you in Hawaii while It was a, only a short time. And then they sent you back to the United States. And they then they shipped me back to the states. Yeah. Where to? We went to San. Uh, we pulled in at San Diego. And uh, at Oakland, or oh, uh, we pulled in at. At, uh, uh, Oakland Naval Hospital is where we went then, and from, we went over the 
the bridge, the long bridge all across that. San Francisco, yeah. From San Francisco, yeah. So how long did you spend in the hospital there? Well, a short time, and then they shipped us on to Great Lakes, Illinois. I see. Great Lakes Naval Hospital. And you were still undergoing treatment there? Yeah. What were the, uh, so how successful were they on your knee as far as recuperation? That was, that was fine. That, was, that all got better. I see. So uh, I guess we're now into, uh, are we, uh, this is what time period now? Are we into 1945 or? 1944, uh, getting ready for 1945, yeah. yeah. And you were at Great Lakes? Great Lakes, yeah. Now, so uh, did you spend the rest of your time there or did you get that's where I That's where I got discharged from, Great Lakes Naval Hospital. Hospital. They gave you a choice, didn't they, to stay in, but you could have never gone back over to fight again. You could have sat behind the desk and you chose to get out. Okay. Now why did they put that stipulation on it? I don't know. That's Was that because of, because of your injury or what? It was getting near the end of the war, and they knew it, so they they just let. I, that's where he got his purple heart. And yeah. So he was injured. He doesn't. Right. Well, you were awarded a purple heart. Yeah. Yeah. We've had some people, you know, and we can't find ma it. make a misnomer of saying you earn one. You don't. Earn <laughs> you don't earn that. <laughs> yeah. But we lost it. Oh, you did. Can't find it. Oh. And this one VA man, he tried. He he couldn't get it either. Oh, you can't get it replaced. <coughs> oh, my goodness. I don't know why. Yeah. So you were uh, discharged while you were at uh, Great Lakes, then, huh? Yeah. I see. Uh, so. Uh, I just wanted to go back one more time to Tinian. Was Tinian where you lost your company commander? And when the uh, was that shell that hit? Yeah. Yeah. Now the tank that was in front of you that was one of our tanks. That was one of our tanks. Yeah. Right. Now, did they use flamethrowers and those things while you were on Tinian? Yes, they did. They used them all the time. Did you uh, witness that yourself? Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. yeah. It must be a horrific type. Thing. Yes, it is. That's that's a wicked. That's wicked. Well, that was awful tough uh, fighting on you guys over there on Tenny and uh -huh. and uh, in Saipan. Uh -huh. Some of the toughest fighting in the war, I guess. Uh -huh. but, uh, is there anything else before we move on that you want to share with us about uh, Saipan and Tenny? I don't want to go over it too lightly, I, but. It's such a significant part of our American history and Marine Corps history, what you uh, participated in. It's hard to imagine the things that you saw and participated in, Jack. It's hard to re really remember everything. I try to, it's try, I try to, but it's just hard to remember everything I, that occurred. You think you could still uh, send uh, coded messages? I don't think I could take code at all. <laughs> um, so, in March, I guess March the twenty seventh, nineteen forty five, you're formally discharged from yes. the United States Marine Corps. Yeah. At Great Lakes. Yeah. And so, tell us what happened then, and the rest of your story, your life story here. Well, then they got me ready to take off on voyage. So you came home to Cincinnati yeah. directly? I came back to Cincinnati, I yeah. guess you were kind of anxious to meet your fiance that you mailed <laughs> your wedding ring in. Yeah. Yeah. So you, so you came home right away? Yes, I did. And um, 
Then uh, when did you uh, meet up with Lucille? And I met her. I met her down at the station, down at the Union, Union Terminal. I see. She had, and she changed quite a bit in that year. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you guys uh, were formally engaged then for over some time. Yeah. And uh, when did you uh, folks get married? 1946, we got married. What's I was on my 22nd birthday. Okay. And that's the day you got married, so it would have been September the 19th of 46? That's right. Uh -huh. I, w yeah, I, I have a feeling I know why you did that. <laughs> <laughs> you knew you'd never forget your anniversary. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And how many children did you folks have? We had five children. Five children. Mm -hmm. And what are their names? There's uh, Donna, Pamela, John, Kimberly and Kenneth. And Kenneth, I see. And um, what were you doing for a living when you first got out of the service? What did I do? Where'd you go to work to at uh, for first your first job? Well, I didn't work actually very long because then he went to play baseball. I see. It wasn't long after he came back because then that next year is forty. We got married then in September. That you got married in 46. Uh -huh. um, so how did, how did you get into baseball? You have to explain that to us. You just you got discharged and you got married. So how did baseball? I played, I played some baseball in the service. And uh, uh, I, I told you about that one one game where I had two home runs right. to win the ball. <coughs> but he played for five years. But I, I, it was in my blood, I guess. I wanted to, I wanted to play baseball. Mm -hmm. That's what I wound up doing. Well, how did they recruit you? Is what I'm uh, curious about. There was, there was a scout that was was uh, on the loose, and he he wanted me to sign. My father went was there, and he he signed me. I wasn't twenty one yet, so he had a sign for me. And um, what team was that? I, I went to uh, uh, to the. I went to, what's the name of that team I went to? Up in New Saint, York. Uh, Gloversville, New York? No, no. Uh, what was the name of the? Not the St. Louis. Class Bay. A baseball. Oh. It was, uh, oh, so you actually signed uh, with a scout before you got married? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And. The first, uh, what team did this scout represent? It was St. Louis Browns. St. Louis Browns? Yeah. And you went to a, a, an A-League training camp, yeah. so to speak, in I New went York? right to the A-League, a right to that team. And what position was that for? That was when I was a, still a shortstop. I signed as a shortstop. And, uh, and, and into uh, this, End of the first, near the end of the first season, they changed me into a pitcher, and I did fairly well. Now, so you're in a, 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 a league, I guess it's called, and then there's what a, a double A league and a triple A league, yeah, or what? Double A, triple A. Yeah. So did you move up in each league, at, uh, or did you jump from? One. Well, you go from one one to another, right? And uh, I never did go very far. Uh, I, had a, I had a. You wound up in Texas. A 
Yeah, I went down to Texas. And what league was that? That was a triple. That was that was a what the league was that anyhow? Triple A or no? That was a? that was a that was a ball, I guess. Where at in Texas? That was in uh, that was in Bryan, Texas. Oh. Um, at, at the, back at where you back went, where I went to, actually where Signal I went to school, school. yeah, yeah, okay. yeah that was something. That will be done. So you're playing on the farm team for the St. Louis Browns. Mm -hmm. And uh, how long did you stay on the farm team? You went on the farm team sometime in, before you were uh, 21, so it's 1945. Yeah. It was quite a while, let's see. What year did you get into the majors? I never made it to the majors. Okay. And you played uh, uh, on the farm team for five years? Yeah. 1946? 1946. To 1951. No, 1946. To 46? Uh, I lived with my mother. So, uh, and you stayed in Cincinnati while he was traveling? I only went to visit that one time and he dumped me, forgot, so I didn't ever go back. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so, how much money did you make, say, a month while you were on this farm team? A couple hundred a month. About $200 a yeah, month? Yeah, that wasn't, wasn't much money. Now, she back in those days. I think fifteen dollars. That's what I got. And I'd give my mother ten of it, and I had would have five dollars. <laughs> we didn't have, had nothing. It was rough. It was rough, believe me. So you were trying to make it to the majors, obviously. Yeah. And yeah. you and you say while you were there, you pitched a no hitter. Is that correct? Yeah. So you weren't playing shortstop. You were playing. They made you a pitcher. Yeah. So did you pitch for the whole uh, five years that you were on the? I, I pitched for the next four years. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And when did you pitch a no hitter? That was nineteen. What what year was that? That your third or fourth year, or that was a third year, I think. Third year. That was a third year. Yeah. Why do you think they didn't call you up? I don't know. Sometimes it it, it depends on you know you you have a a pretty good year and you expect to be called up. Right. But you know, they they just don't always call you. You know. Right. Now did you? Uh, you pitch against any known names when you threw that uh, no hitter that went on to become big time. Big time. Yeah, that was a pretty good ball club I pitched that against. That was a uh, see uh, uh, the leadoff hitter. He was going to the Southern Association the following year. That was Double A. And. I forget how that wound up. Now, did, were there any uh, serious major league uh, players that were on your farm team with you during those five years? Uh, yeah, the colored fellow f the, from Cincinnati, the first colored player to play, play for Cincinnati, he was on a team, and uh, his, uh, his locker was right next to mine. Who was that? I forget what the devil his name was. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Well, there was nuts all of it. it uh, Oh, he was on your farm team too? He wasn't on our farm team, but he was on the 
a Reds farm team. Uh -huh. There were some good ball players. Though. Yeah. So, so you ended your your career then with uh, the farm team in what 1951. I guess it was 1951. Yeah. So you two are actually living on that kind of money for. Well, I lived with my parents. From 19. I didn't. My mother fed us, and I had two children. Yeah. Or Chuck Harmon? Chuck Harmon? Yeah. Chuck Harmon. I'll get back to you in a minute. Chuck Harmon. I don't think he was the, I don't think he was the. It's just look. That's okay. I was just trying to find that name. I, th I think, I think, I, I, I recall the name, Chuck Harmon. I don't think he was the one. Well, you guys had to visit each other more than once. You just he said, used to come home oh, he, when they had oh, you come home in the wintertime. Oh, right? yeah. And then right. he worked for a couple months. Do I, I, uh, what he worked at Le Blonde's. At the mowing machine. The mowing machine. Mowing machine. Yes. <coughs> yeah. Five years, period. Yeah. R.K. Le Blonde. R.K. Le, Le Blonde. Yes. It was up there on Madison Road where right. Brookwood is yeah. now. Uh, um, what did. So, after your uh, baseball career, so to speak, um, where did you go to work as a full-time job then for, for your career, so to speak? Uh, that's when I went to Swallens. I was well, with. You went to GE, didn't you? Again, he was at GE before the war. Uh, <coughs> he had opportunities for. Really nice jobs, good jobs. But we went to Swallens. Pat, uh, that was Pat Swallens, wasn't it? Pat Swallens. Yeah. Um, and what'd you do for the Swallens? Now that was a that was a family, wasn't it? Family. Yes, it was. Yeah. I was uh, I was the uh, store manager, store manager for quite a few years over at Red Bank Road. Mm -hmm. And I worked at at the Tri County store. Yes. Sporting goods. Sporting man. goods. I ran the sporting goods department. How long did you spend with the Swallens uh, organization? Years. I was there quite he a worked few years. Fourteen part time years. Fourteen part time. He worked the post office. He went. To I was in the post office 20 years. That's where, that's where he did it. I had a, it was a mess, I had a messed up life. And then he quit the day that uh, they got a raise. Remember the post office never got a raise? The day they got a raise and went on strike and all that, that's the day he quit. That's the day I went to, to air, traffic air, traffic control. air traffic control. I pe life took a really quick, <laughs> And I passed that, and I found out that wasn't for me. He was oh. only gone like three weeks, and he called and he says, I'm coming home. <laughs> I thought, oh, God. Well, that job would drive you crazy. That would drive you nuts. That's when you went to Swallows. So yeah. you worked you work part time. You worked uh, at the post office, though. With full time. Full, for 14 years. 20 years I worked there. Oh, 20 years. Mm -hmm. And 14 part time. Um, so after 20 years with the post office, you went to work for Swollen, and you spent 40 years with uh, the Swollen family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, when did that all? When did you retire from them, or when did that all go down? Because I retired at 65. Right. And then he worked three I, years. I worked. Afterwards. And then they they and let they me him. they they let me go because that was falling. This place was falling apart. You never knew if you had a job. You went in, and he went in to work one morning. They told him to go home. That right. was it. Yeah. He got nothing. Yeah. Yeah, I remember when they went down. They had a good reputation though yeah, for they did. so All long. Years. When yeah. Pat Pat was living in Carla, when they were living, the, the place ran fairly well. A lot of TVs were sold out of there, weren't they? Yeah. Oh, they sold. Yeah. They sold large appliances like right. crazy. Right. They had good furniture. 
So, uh, so you retired from them after in '65. So you had to be working a couple of jobs at the same time throughout all of this. He delivered pills. He worked at a pool hall. <laughs> You've had one heck of a life. Eh? I have. It's huh? been. I think we ought to. I think we ought to be interviewing you over I here. Think so. You know, for the rest of this interview, though, I want to bring this chair over and have a seal set with no. it. Huh? But, uh, but you've had a great life together. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we had almost 70 years. It wasn't one of them sweetheart lives. Yeah. You know, you hear these love stories. I listen to this stuff, you know. And I, hell, if he dies, I ain't sure going to not sit home. I'm not going to sit home and cry like okay. some of these women do. God, <laughs> for all them years. <laughs> mm. My neighbors, some of them, oh, they, they lived with them. Yeah. They lived, you know, in a con condo complex. And mostly wi widows, all the men died right. that lived there. That we knew. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, this has been a, a very enlightening and <laughs> wonderful interview, Jack. Uh, mm -hmm. You were awarded the Purple Heart. What other medals did you get from the United I States? Didn't, I didn't get any other medals. You got two medals I brought. They're in that suit, that briefcase. Two medals. I don't know what they are. Um, I didn't get any other medals. Well, you certainly had to get... Them. You certainly had. I didn't uh, apply for any. Uh -huh. I had uh, had some coming. Uh, well, that's that's what I mean. Uh, you certainly would have got the good conduct medal, among other things. Yes. And um, and perhaps more medals for the campaigns you were in. But that's all the medals we lost. I don't know. This is one of your rings, isn't it? Yeah, a ruby, oh, and a. Um, it's in with the medals. And a pearl. Well, nice. Huh? I'm give you that. No, I ain't giving you that. I don't want. Uh, <laughs> not I much. I don't. I don't want an engagement ring unless you mail it to me. <laughs> if you mail it to me, I'll take it. I took the wrong. Those are the little pictures I got that he took on. Boy, you need to identify these on the back with seals for, for the. Well, he should have done that. That's yeah. his job. Well, yeah. yeah, that's your job, Jack. Um, and then I put the wrong envelope in. Yes. Yeah. Yep. But, um, but he well, did it, have two medals. And the yeah. one. Oh, I'm sure he did. My he did. Son you don't go through said those. The one. Metal to get the Purple Heart back, we didn't have. He was in the, oh, the service. I see. That, that's what he said. Well, he needed a medal. We didn't have that medal. <laughs> and he never cared about the medal. Right. Part of it. right. Yeah. And I think my kids used to play with him. Yeah. Because <laughs> he had the baseball, you know. From the no hitter, mm -hmm. we had that for years. I swear, my kids when they were little, the touch played, yeah. oh, played yeah. lots. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jack, is there? Uh, I want to first of all thank you for your service uh -huh. and what you did for our country, mm -hmm. uh, not only in World War II but just being a uh, one okay. of the great pillars of our community. Thank You're you. You're a great guy. You and Lucille make a wonderful couple. I thank you again. Okay. Bye -bye. <laughs>